Good evening. Baruch HaMaboyim. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, again, this is a class is, uh, called My Thoughts. that is usually given on, in the shul on Wednesday nights on different topics. And uh, again, today there's no other topic that is uh, more on our mind than the coronavirus. So again, uh, I'd like to begin with that. Again, well, another week has gone by and we are still under self-quarantine. Oh, excuse me, let me begin again. I need to put this on a recorder. Again, Bruchem Aboyim, thank you very much for coming. And again, all this is new, a whole different world. Um, so, well, another week has gone by and we are still under the self-quarantine. Another Shabbos at home instead of sharing it with our extended Shul family. I hope that you and yours are doing well, physically, financially, and emotionally. These are trying times. But tonight I would like to discuss think about how we are all doing spiritually. The Hebrew word for prayer is tefillah. When the word is used in the Hebrew text, it narrowly refers to the prayer that we call the Amidah, the standing prayer, or commonly known as the Shemona Esrei, 18, alluding to the 18 prayers that were originally included in this holiest of prayers. It is constructed in the manner that Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher, taught us to pray. First, praise of God, then requests, or on Shabbat or the Yom Tov, the theme of the day, and then end with thanks. What does this have to do with the pandemic that we're all experiencing? Maybe quite a bit. As I mentioned before, the last three blessings of the Amidah are only for gratitude, thanking God for all that he has given us. This concept of gratitude, saying thank you to God, our creator, was instituted by the Anshe Knesset Agdola, the men of the Great Assembly, the authors of the Amida. It was included in the Amida for us to always remember there is a God in the world and it is our job, our responsibility to serve him. We admit that we need God and that we appreciate everything that he gives us. True thanksgiving only occurs when people feel they have been given more than they deserve. We begin our day every morning with the words, Mo da'ani, thank you, even before we get out of bed. We thank God for returning our souls, for refreshing our bodies, for giving us another day. Then after we put on our talit and tefillin, we begin our morning prayers with what we call the psuke de zimra, Verses of song, which begin with the words "Hodu Lashem Kitov, Parvehaldu Lashem Kido Bishmo," thank God and call out His name. Now, hundreds of years after the men of the Great Assembly redacted the Amida, the rabbis of the Talmudic period added what they called the Modim de Rabbanim, a prayer of thanks that was instituted by the rabbis to be recited in a quorum of 10 men, a minyan, when the silent Amida prayer is repeated by the shliach tzibur, the one who leads the service. The congregation responds to his words of modim anachnu lach. We thankfully acknowledge with their own prayer of modim anachnu lach, said in an undertone, kind of a harmony of gratitude that are a reflection of what the shliach tzibur is saying. Now, the reason a second mode in prayer is recited is to enable the congregants to thank God once again, along with the Shliach Tzibur. Were the congregants to sit silently while the Shliach Tzibur thanked God, one might think that they, the congregation had exhausted their thanks to God in their silent prayer. Enough is enough. So in order to demonstrate that we can never, I repeat, never thank God enough, we repeat a modim prayer along with the recitation of the original by the Shliach Sibor. In the recitation of the silent of Mita, we bow at the beginning and the end of this prayer of thanks to God. Modim, thank you for all the many blessings that he bestows upon us constantly. Then again, while the Shliach Sibor is repeating the original prayer, we are saying our own silent acknowledgement of gratitude while bowing throughout the whole paragraph, rising slowly like a snake 
as we say the words of Modya. I heard a statement that if you thank God properly, then we show our obedience and humility, bowing submissively before him with awe. However, if we forget to and ignore God and do not thank him properly, then we become like the primordial snake in the Garden of Eden, whom God banished from his presence forever. Now, the gematria of the word nochosh, snake, is 358. The same gematria as it would be as the word Mashiach, the Messiah. This is a world of what we call bechira, free will. We can choose either the way of the snake or, hopefully, the way of Mashiach. Why the emphasis on what we call hakoratatov, gratitude? We are referred to as Jews, which originated from the word hoda, thank you. The Yaakov, our father, had four wives, and it was known to them that he would father 12 tribes. They assumed that each wife would bear three sons for him. When Leah saw that she had given birth to, her, to his fourth son, well, she gave her fourth son the name Yehuda. Thank God, as recognition that God had given her more than her own portion. It's all about gratitude, thanking people, but especially thanking God for all the goodness that he has bestowed upon us. And even more so today, we live in the most prosperous country in the history of the world, a place that not only allows us to practice our faith, but supports and protects us as full citizens with equal rights. We are everywhere in our society, politics, sports, entertainment, music, academics, and the list goes on and on. That's great. But where is God in all of this? Who has given us all of these blessings? The government, our education, our intellect, our perseverance? Yeah, all of these things matter, but Without siyata dishmaya, without the help of our Father in Heaven, nothing, absolutely nothing happens. Success is God's. All we have is effort. A small virus. And so this too will end. We all need to remember that this pandemic is only temporary. This crisis is part of what our sages have called the ikve de Meshiche, the footsteps of the coming of the Messiah. Things will never go back to normal. But really, that's not bad. Because the question becomes, was our normal good enough? We had so much goodness in the world, and it seemed like there were so many cries of gloom and doom. Where was the laughter? Where was the joy? Where was the appreciation? Many times when you turned on your television or read a newspaper, all you heard, all you read was negative. It was, and it is time for a change. The sages tell us that the time of the Messiah will be a time of peace. Well, he certainly hasn't come yet. In the Torah, when we read about the tochacha, the admonitions, others refer to them as the curses, the Torah first begins with blessings. Blessings first, and only later does it mention the tochacha, the admonitions. God does not want to punish us. He is a benevolent father who wants only good for us. However, he does want us to acknowledge him. He wants to be relevant in our lives, like any father does. We collectively, as a world, need to be better. God has been sending us warnings constantly. Tsunamis, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes... And all we see is nature and global warming. Somehow people think that God has nothing to do with any of these events. We are his children, and he expects us to behave in a certain manner. Not for his benefit, but for our benefit. God is forcing us to go back to basics. Wherever we have a pro- whenever we have a problem, we look outside ourselves. We think. In the grand scheme of things, really, what difference does it make what I do? What difference does it make what I say? After all, I'm only one person. Maybe this is exactly what God wants of us, to get back to the number one. 
As it says in Pirkei Avot, chapter 4, Mishnah number 1, where the question is asked, Ezehu Gibor, who is strong? And the answer given is, Hakobe Yitzro, one who masters his passions. He is better than one who conquers a city. You know, they tell a story of a king who wanted to capture a city, and he sent his commandos against the city gates, and they were killed out to the man. And then he sent his infantry, and again, they were wiped out to the man. After that, he sent his cavalry, and they too were wiped out to the man. All that was left was his supply troops and his cooks, so he sent them against the city gate, and the city gate fell, and the king was able to conquer the city. And after the battle, his general came to see the king, thinking he would see a joyous king, jubilant. After all, he succeeded in his task. And yet the king was not happy. The king looked perplexed. And the general asked the king, what's wrong? You, you were successful. You won. The king looked at the general and he said, but I don't understand. Are you going to tell me that my cooks and my supply troops were better than than the commandos, better than the infantry, better than the cavalry? And the general smiled and looked at the king and he said, no, your highness. The, ca the commandos did what they were supposed to do. The infantry did what they were supposed to do. The cavalry did what they were supposed to do. You could have sent the Girl Scouts against the city. One more push, one more thumb, one more attempt. In fact, the word triumph comes with the word try with more oomph. One more time. And that's why the city gate fell. The power of one. You know, if you heat water up to 211 degrees Fahrenheit, you have a hot cup of tea. One more degree, 212 degrees Fahrenheit, and you can run a locomotive. The power of the number one. God has given us an opportunity to reconnect, not only with our families, but with also with ourselves. This is a moment in time where we can take a true assessment of our lives and our relationship with our Father in Heaven to recognize exactly what is important. Now, we all need to change. We all need to be better. And we can. Sometimes all we need is a moment in time, something that breaks the cycle that we're on. We're kind of like gerbils on a wheel. I think we all needed to get off the merry-go-round that we call life. Well, guess what? God has pushed the pause button. Let's not waste the opportunity. Next Wednesday night, we will begin the holiday of Pesach. Quite different this year. And just like the Jews in Egypt were told to stay in their houses with their families on this special night, so too are we ordered by the government to stay in our houses after midnight. The true time of danger in Egypt when God Almighty himself killed all the firstborn of Egypt. And just as their salvation came in an instant, so too can God save us from this pandemic in an instant. This is the month of Nisan, which connects to the word Nisim, miracles. Be'ezus Hashem, with the help of God, we just need to believe. Think good, and it'll be good. Again, going back to basics, to the roots of our birth as a nation, and introduction to the wedding of God and the Jewish people on Mount Sinai, where we and God became one with the giving of the Torah, our instruction manual for life. And let us pray to God Almighty that just as he healed all the sick and mended all the cripples that stood at the foot of Mount Sinai, at the giving of the Torah. So too, should he bless us and save us from this pandemic that is threatening our lives, the lives of people all over the world. And with that, may we herald in the coming Mashiach Sinkenu quickly and with as little pain and sickness as possible.